what's going on YouTube. So as you've probably seen, especially if you follow our channel, Toyota just recently fully redesigned the Tundra pickup truck after nearly 15 years on the market. But they're not done reinvigorating their largest vehicles yet, which is why I'm standing next to this next generation Toyota Sequoia. With the discontinuation of the Land Cruiser, this Tundra-based full-size SUV is now Toyota's flagship, a title it's hoping to back up with the most luxury, capability, and technology that Sequoia has ever offered. So can this brand new model stand up to competition like the Tahoe and Expedition? Let's go ahead and find out. Alrighty, so let's kick off this full review by taking a look at the exterior. Now, of course, uh, at first glance, you're gonna notice that this does look pretty similar to the Tundra, which of course, like I just said, it is based upon. However, there are some pretty critical differences. Um, when you look closely, you'll notice um, the grill, for instance, all of the grills are going to be body color surrounded. Um, and they're also not quite as large and chunky as in the Tundra where it has the thick piece of chrome that comes all the way down to the bottom. That's not present here with this Sequoia. So it's kind of a subtle difference. Now in terms of the grill texture itself, just like the Tundra, basically every single trim level has a different design. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but it ranges from basic to sporty to this right here, which is very blingy here on the fully loaded capstone model, all with the chrome and whatnot. Of course, your Toyota badge is gonna be traced in blue, signifying this is a hybrid, and we'll talk about that extensively throughout the video. Now, as we come on over here to our headlights, uh, you are gonna have standard LED headlights across all versions of the Sequoia. If you get to the platinum level or higher, that's where you're going to get um, auto leveling, as well as the really nice sequential turn signals you see right there. However, I am happy to say that down here in your lower face, you'll see the LED fog lamps, and these are gonna be included on all trim levels as well. Now, next up, we have our wheels, and there are an absolute ton of different choices when it comes to this area. Only the base model is gonna have 18-inch alloys. Everything else is gonna have 20-inch uh, alloys or 22-inch alloys in the case of this fully loaded capstone model. As you can see, these are absolutely fantastic looking wheels, in my opinion. I love all the spoke designs, as well as the contrast color finishes. And like I said, there's a lot of other options, especially if you start to branch into the fact that there is a TRD off-road package, as well as a TRD uh, sport package offered on the SR5 or the limited trim levels. And rising on up, we do have a lot of badging, including your iForce Max badge right there. You've got the capstone branding down here to remind you you have the best version. And then we also have the chrome mirror cap that's going to be exclusive to the capstone as well. Now, as far as the mirrors themselves, they are nice and large. Um, you're gonna have standard fully loaded, so that's very nice to see. That means heating, power folding, auto dimming, and blind spot monitoring. Plus, you can option on special larger towing mirrors to all of the trim levels. All right, guys, so let's talk about some important elements with the all new Sequoia. So here at the side, the length is 208.1 inches in overall length, which does make this around three inches longer than the previous generation Toyota Sequoia, uh, although it is about two inches shorter than something like a Chevy Tahoe. It's also worth noting you cannot get a long wheelbase version for the Sequoia. It is what it is. This is the one and only configuration you can get. Now, as far as other elements here at the side, the capstone is gonna chrome everything out. We have the chrome door handles, the chrome window surrounds. And then if we walk around to the rear design, let's talk about this because I think this might be my favorite element about the new Sequoia. I like the rear design. It just has a really tough boxy look with also a lot of new modern elements. Um, so let's go ahead and break down what you're gonna get here. So here in the middle, we do have this chrome piece that intersects between the taillights. We're also gonna have that blue Toyota badge because this is a hybrid, of course. And then let's look at our taillights. Favorite element here, we have the dynamic turn signals included on this taillight. So if you go for a platinum trim or above, that will include your premium taillights, which include 
the dynamic turn signal as well as a more premium fancy design. I do like these taillights quite a lot. Now if we drop down we have Sequoia spelled out across the back and then for the lower area you're going to notice we have a little bit of chrome trimming down here. No exposed exhaust outlets though and that's um, going to be across the entire Sequoia range unless you go for a TRD Pro and then you'll get two exhaust pipes on the right side. Now as far as your tow rating you're looking at 9,520 pounds for a 4x2 SR5. Um, that's going to be a pretty big improvement over the previous generation Sequoia up 22%. Now for the Sequoia, you're also going to have a pretty advanced safety suite standard equipment on every single model. So it's going to be Toyota Safety Sense 2.5. Um, that's going to include all of your normal stuff, including forward emergency braking and pedestrian detection, lane keeping assist, auto high beams, as well as adaptive cruise control. Now additionally for your warranty information, you have Toyota Signature Warranty, 3 year 36,000 mile basic warranty, 5 year 60,000 mile powertrain warranty, plus two years and 25,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. But guys, that's gonna wrap up the exterior design of this all new Sequoia Capstone. I am a huge fan of the way this new truck looks, but there's a lot of luxury on the inside that we've just gotta show you. So let's go ahead and get into that. So of course with the Sequoia, you do have a standard smart entry system. And we also have the power deploying running boards here with the capstone model. Just go ahead and quickly climb inside here because of that really loud and annoying um, leaf blower going. Now, of course, you don't need me to tell you, it definitely is a huge improvement when it comes to interior design and luxury over the previous generation. And let's go ahead and start off by talking about some of our material and color choices. So we do have the materials for the um, Sequoia lineup. So that means the SR5 is gonna start off with a cloth seat. The limited model is gonna move you up to the Softex leatherette seating. If you choose the platinum, that will get you real leather. And then when you go for the top end model, the capstone, that's where you're gonna unlock this semi aniline leather. Absolutely beautiful. For those of you who don't know, semi aniline leather is some of the nicest in the entire auto industry and usually reserved for just the Lexus products, but we do have it here on this top in Sequoia, and it feels absolutely wonderful, very supple, and you do also have this special color scheme when you choose the capstone. So as you can tell, we have a really unique two-tone, so the top part of the seat is gonna be white, the lower part of the seat is black, and you'll see that reflected throughout the cabin as well, so definitely a very nice and uh, beautiful looking design. Now as we come over to the seats themselves, you are going to have a standard eight-way power adjusting seat. However, on your Platinum and your Capstone, you're going to have four ways of lumbar, and you're also going to have a power thigh extension. And then taking a look up here at our door trim and some of the materials inside of the whole cabin itself, as you can see, we do have the nice leather across the armrest portion, the white leather across the middle, and then you have the black leather across the top with the stitching detail. As far as the windows, they're going to be one touch auto up and down for all four. And you do have memory seating actually on all but the base trim level. Now as we carry on to the upper portions, uh, the capstone is going to throw in this nice leather across all of this upper area, although it is going to be hard touch over here on this part. We also have the special um, open pour walnut wood with the capstone. And you can't see it right now, but capstone branding would illuminate through there at nighttime. So that'd be a cool look. Down below that, again, all the center areas finished in the nice leather. We have good stitching details all throughout. More of the wood down here in the middle. More leather padding down here along the side. And of course, this is a Toyota after all. So even this pre-production model does have fantastic build quality. Everything is solidly put together. No rattles, no panel gaps, anything like that. But anyways, let's go ahead and start this up. The button, of course, is blue because this is a hybrid. Right now, the engine is not running, making it really nice and quiet in here. And let's go ahead and talk about the gauge cluster. So unlike the Tundra, you're actually going to have this 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster as standard, even on the base 8 SR5 model. 
Uh, this is a really nice looking gauge cluster, very crisp, very high resolution, and you can scroll between all the typical kinds of information over here on this side, and the design does change, of course, when you change between the different drive modes. Furthermore, if you choose one of the upper end models, as in the Platinum or the uh, Capstone, that's going to throw in this 10 inch head up display, which contains a lot of useful information. It takes up a, you know, a lot of space um, when you're making turns and stuff for the navigation. It's very helpful. Let's pull back here to the steering wheel. Of course, we've got the latest Toyota design, just like with the Tundra. Nice leather wrapped. It's thick rimmed as well. And you've got the perforated leather over here for your hand grips. Um, and then a faux stitching detail here on the airbag cover. As far as the wheel itself, it's going to be uh, tilt and telescoping no matter which model you choose. Manually for the lower end models, power for this Platinum and the Capstone models. And then you also will have steering wheel heating on all but the SR5. But as a large family three row SUV, of course storage is paramount. So let's go ahead and check it out. So we've got a lot of different uh, storage solutions in here, as you'd expect. We can start off with this itty bitty little storage compartment underneath of the uh, open pour wood. You got this little tray here. This slides back, gives you quick access down to the main console, or you can just grab that and open it up entirely. When you do that, you're going to be greeted with a very large console, plenty of space in here, nicely rubber lined, and these pads are removable if they get dirty. And of course, you do also have a USB-A and a USB-C port. And you know, we have to do it. We got to test out the stack of coupons and see how they fit in here. I am anticipating it will be no problem whatsoever. Um, they might get a little out of whack because the uh, storage is on several different levels. But other than that, no complaints. By the way, I do want to show off kind of what this key looks like a little bit more um, since I had to jump in the truck pretty fast. Up in front of that, of course, you got your two cup holders. And then up in the very front, we do have a large area here where your phone can set um, kind of upright um, and wireless charge if you have the Platinum or the Capstone model for standard equipment. All right, so let's pull on back here to the shifter. We have a nice, big, meaty, traditional shifter. I'm sure a lot of you guys will be happy to see that instead of electronic or push button. Pull back for drive. Bump over here to the left if you want to uh, shift manually up and down like so. Go all the way up to the front if you want to go into reverse and that's where you'll be greeted with this standard 360 degree backup camera. You heard me right, it's actually standard. So unlike the Tundra where you have to go up to the platinum grade, on this model you're going to get this on the SR5. This is a wonderful 360 camera. I love that it takes up the entire 14 inch display here. You can change all your different views and zones right through there. You turn on and off your guidelines uh, as well as your trailering stuff. Um, so this is really a very, very nice setup to see. Um, also offered in the towing tech package is the straight path assist. So that basically helps you back up a uh, trailer by kind of controlling the steering wheel for you. Um, and like I said, that's available in that package. Going to be standard on the capstone and the platinum optional on the other grades. And then right in front of that, you do have your electronic parking brake with your brake hold. Now in terms of some other buttons in this area, of course you do have your trailer brake controller right there. Behind the shifter, we've got our four wheel drive controls. We also have our drive mode controller and this is also where you can activate your tow haul mode. And let's move on up here to this area. Uh, this is going to include our standard three zone automatic climate control setup. Adjustments to this are super simple. You have nice physical knobs here uh, that you can go up and down for both of your, or all three of your zones rather, and manually control things like your zones and your fan speeds. Um, also, you do have standard three-stage heated seats on board, and if you want seat ventilation, all you need to do is go up one rung past the SR5 to at least the limited, or you can actually option it on to the SR5. And then right next to that, you have a large physical volume knob. So in terms of your audio systems, you're going to be looking at a standard eight speaker sound system. And when you get to the platinum grade, that's gonna get you the 14 speaker JBL sound system that we have here on the capstone. And let's give it a sample. Yeah, 
so overall sound quality of this system is pretty good. Um, the only thing I can complain about, you know how I feel about metal speaker grills. These look like they're metal speaker grills, but they're actually plastic, so I'm a little disappointed by that. But anyways, one thing I'm not disappointed by is the technology on board with this new Sequoia. Obviously, night and day change from the previous generation, but also this is really just a fantastic setup for any vehicle at this point. So this is running Toyota's new audio multimedia interface, and there's just a ton of improvements on board. But first, let's talk about the display. This is a 14-inch display, which I already mentioned. This is actually gonna be standard on the limited trim level and above. You can also option it on to the SR5 trim level. Um, and then the standard screen is gonna be eight inches for those of you who choose the fully basic model. Um, in terms of this display, uh, as you can see, absolutely beautiful, very, very vivid, um, looks fantastic. Right now we're running in the wireless Android Auto system and this is Google Maps. Uh, you do also have wireless Apple CarPlay as well. And overall, just heading back into Toyota's uh, infotainment system itself, like we said in some of our past reviews, it's just very simple with this new generation. You have big buttons, everything is easy to, to hit while you're on the move, um, and a simple interface with basically your main shortcuts down there on the side. This is your dynamic navigation system, which is built in and looks very nice as well. And you do also have the Hey Toyota voice assistant, which there it is working right there. As we move on up here, we do have a uh, rear view mirror. It's gonna be standard auto dimming with Homelink Universal Remotes, but if you go for the Platinum or higher, that's gonna give you this digital rear view mirror. So you can flip that switch. It's gonna cut out all the back obstructions, any cargo or anything you have, and give you that live camera feed to the back. Of course, up top here, you're gonna have an area for your sunglasses, full LED lighting. And then across the roof here, we do have a new feature to the Sequoia lineup that's going to be a panoramic sunroof standard on platinum and capstone. Well, come on back here in the all new Sequoia's rear seat. I'm pretty excited to be back here and I think you can already tell just how luxurious this rear area is. This is a really, really nice space. I mean, this is basically like a luxury SUV at this point. Um, so let's go ahead and break down the actual space figures as well as the luxury features that they are throwing in for this all new capstone Sequoia. So we'll start with the space first. We're looking at 39.2 inches of rear leg room, 38.4 inches of headroom. Um, that does place this around an inch smaller technically than the Tahoe as well as something like an Expedition. That said, as you can see, I'm five foot nine. This is Drew's seating position, and I'm looking at, I'd say that's almost a foot of space, maybe even a little bit more, and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. So we are looking at really, really good space figures in this Sequoia. And another thing I do want to mention is the seating arrangements. That's, of course, very important to anything in this segment. We are going to have captain's chairs as standard equipment when you go for the platinum or capstone trim levels. It's also on the TRD uh, Pro as well but we're not covering that. We'll cover that in a separate review. And these are really nice captain's chairs. We have the nice armrest here. Um, they do not slide. However, they do recline quite a good way. So you can take a really good nap in this seat and they're really comfortable as well. Now, as far as our features that they're gonna throw in, we have cup holders here in the uh, middle area here. We also have nice leather wrapping around it. Dropping down, we are gonna have standard three zone climate on every single Sequoia model. So that's gonna be a nice feature to have. Also, you're noticing this right here. We have three-stage heated rear seats um, and three-stage ventilated rear seats. So this is gonna be one of those features that you don't see very commonly in this segment. As a matter of fact, the Tahoe, um, the Expedition, they don't have those as available features. And that is gonna be included not just only on this capstone, but also on the Platinum model as well. Now, dropping down below that, we have a USB uh, type C as well as a smart charging USB and then we're also going to have a household style outlet to charge up a laptop or whatever else you're going to need. The center area is going to have a little storage cubby right here for the captain's chairs model. And then we have vents right here on the roof in addition to those vents right there on the side and then 
you also notice we have rear window sunshades, and that's going to be on the limited trim and above. And then if you turn over to the door trim there, I want to talk about the materials. We do have really nice materials, leather on the upper part, leather through the middle, and leather on the armrest portion, plus some more of that beautiful wood trim. Um, so overall, this is going to be an exceptional place to spend time. It has a lot of space, a lot of luxury, and a lot of comfort. Now, a big part about the Sequoia has got to be the third row. So let's hop on back there, and I won't leave you in suspense any longer. So in order to get back here, we just grab this little lever right here that folds the seat and pops it right out of place, out of the way. Really nice system. And then you can just kind of climb the stairs up into the third row itself. Okay. And sitting back here in the third row of the all-new Sequoia, so I'll talk about the space first, and then I'll talk about my general impressions. So one of the big features about this third row is that it can slide forward and back. Um, so you just grab this, and you can slide the seat forward six inches or back six inches, depending on if you need extra space in the trunk or in the third row itself. If you slide it to the maximum configuration, you're looking at 33.7 inches of rear leg room in the third row, which actually the leg room is not bad at all. Um, I have a few inches of spare space behind the second row seat. My feet can fit a few toes in there. Um, so it's, you know, overall it's not bad if you slide the seat all the way back. That said, the thigh support is going to be a little bit lacking. Um, the Sequoia is not riding on an independent rear suspension like something like the Chevy Tahoe. So you are gonna have a little bit of sacrifices there um, for the third row. Now, as far as other features though, they have made it quite nice. So we have third row sunshades. That's gonna be included if you get the limited trims and above. We also have vents here on the side, cup holders integrated within, and we're also gonna have buttons to power recline the third row. So, you know, overall it's not too bad if you recline it back and kind of stretch out and maybe kick your feet right through the middle of the captain's chairs. All right, guys, let's come up to the cargo because in a big SUV like this, you got to be able to haul some stuff along with a lot of people. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about that. We have an independently popping rear glass. So that's, of course, a feature that a lot of brands are getting rid of that is included on this Sequoia. So I'm happy to see that they left that uh, on this generation. It is worth noting, though, it's not going to roll down like the current gen Sequoia. So I know a lot of you guys like that. Now, as far as the other elements in the tailgate, it is going to be a hands-free power one if you go for the SR5 premium trim and above. So just kick under the bumper to open it up. As you can see, it does work really quite well. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this space that you're gonna get for the all-new Sequoia. Um, so as far as behind the third row, what you're seeing now is about 11 cubic feet of space because we have the seats uh, slid all the way back. Um, for the maximum third row space. Um, we can slide them forward by just grabbing this handle right here. And then when you do that, that's gonna give you an additional 11 cubic feet. So you're gonna have 22 cubic feet of maximum cargo space with the seats adjusted like this. If you fold them down and behind the second row, you're gonna be looking at 49 cubic feet. And as a maximum, you're looking at 87 cubic feet of cargo capacity. It is worth noting uh, there is not a long wheelbase version of the Sequoia and also a lot of the rivals are well over 100 cubic feet in cargo capacity. So this is gonna be quite a bit smaller uh, cargo space wise than something like a Tahoe or Expedition. But there is a lot of innovation back here. So we'll go ahead and start talking about that. Um, you're probably noticing this right here. This is the shelving system. Um, so there's a lot of different configurations that you can you know, get the shelf. Um, you can do three different ways uh, to maximize whatever you're gonna need. Also to make sure that the seats do fold uh, flat with the floor, you can design the floor to do whatever. Um, hopefully I'll have a video clip to insert in so you can see all the different configurations that you can you know, rearrange it back here. Now, as far as other features though, let's look on here in the side. Uh, we have a power folding third row, and that's actually going to be standard on the vast majority of Sequoia models. So as you can see, it does fold the third row down completely. In this cargo configuration, as you can see, the seats do not fold in to the floor because this is a hybrid and the battery pack is actually up under the third row, so they couldn't have it up under um, fold into the floor. And then we also have LED lighting right here as well as a household style outlet.
Now let's talk about the passenger seat. We do have a power adjusting passenger seat. Um, it's going to be quite a few ways of adjustment. I'm not exactly sure. I think it's eight ways and then you also have the four-way lumbar support so it might be 12 ways total um, and then as far as the glove box let's open that up inside of here there's definitely plenty of room for our coupons we actually already stored them in there um, we're in texas and we threw them in there they definitely fit in there perfectly fine and then up top we have a paper telling us that this is a pre-production prototype vehicle um, and then we have some led lighting as well as a mirror and we can detach the visor out as well as extend it. But let's get into what is a very important part because you saw earlier, iForce Max. And I think one of the key parts about this Sequoia is the fact that that powertrain is actually standard, unlike the Tundra, which is gonna come with the 3.5 twin turbo V6. This one comes standard with the iForce Max hybrid system. So I'll go ahead and pop this open for you guys to take a look at. But that definitely means that this has, you know, the most power, um, actually the most standard power in the class. So that's certainly a very nice benefit is if you're going to choose something like the SR5 model. So what this is, is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 hybrid system. So it's paired with an electric motor and a nickel hydride battery pack. Total system output on board is going to be 437 horsepower and 583 pound-feet of torque. So those are some seriously good numbers. Like I said, best in class standard horsepower and it's even as good as the, or actually greater than the upgraded 6.2 liter V8 in the Tahoe if you're shopping that for comparison. Now, as far as other aspects of the powertrain, you do have a 10-speed automatic transmission on board, and you do also have a standard two-wheel drive and available four-wheel drive on all of the models, except for the TRD Pro, which will have standard four-wheel drive, as you would expect. Um, now, in terms of your fuel economy, we don't actually have any numbers. The EPA has not rated this powertrain yet. Um, however, uh, we are hoping that since it is a hybrid system, that we will have pretty competitive numbers and based on what we see with the Tundra it should be pretty good overall for a SUV of this size. Now of course uh, you guys know the drill at this point um, we are under an embargo but we wanted to go ahead and show you guys the Sequoia as soon as possible so we cannot talk driving impressions today however coming up just a few days from now no sweat June 8th um, that's when we're going to post a video of driving impressions as well as pricing, uh, which are two aspects I'm sure you definitely want to know about. So go ahead, mark that down in your calendar to come back to Car Confections on June 8th and check out those full driving impressions as well as pricing. Well guys, thanks so much for joining us on this in-depth review of the all new 2023 Toyota Sequoia Capstone. If you enjoyed watching this video or found it helpful in your purchasing decisions, please hit that subscribe button down below. It really helps us out a lot more than you would imagine. It gets us invited to events like this so we can show you all the newest products first on this channel. So please subscribe, tell a friend, tell a family member, do all of the things. Also follow us on TikTok and Instagram where we have other forms of content and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.